Okay, we're beaver trapping with Paul today on his uh, spring break 2009 out here on the Three Mile Creek. The water's dropped and we got a log across here so we know we got to adjust this. Brought our handy pitchfork. Here we go. This has been a great log here. Natural dive. Okay, I guess the best thing about these uh, logs like this is you can walk across and check your trap. Don't fall in there, Paul. What do we got? How's it look? It's got one. Is it really? Sweet. What do you got there? Oh, looks like a big old bad boy. All right, I bet. Oh, that's strange. It's going that way too. I would have thought it would have been coming upstream. I really don't want to fall in. <laughs> All right, um, just go to the other side there on the shore, or is it wired? Okay, drag it, drag it on the shore there and you'll be all right. And we'll see what we got there. Come over and check it out. Hey, that's a nice surprise. I thought we were just going to be adjusting this log here. And, uh, downstream here is a drainage area that we don't trap in. It's not in a drainage district, so therefore there's nobody wants to pay for the beavers. What do you got there, Paul? Holy cow. That's a nice beaver. That is a big beaver. Yeah, that is a dandy beaver. Big female beaver. Oh, the stabilizer broke. Did you weld that or did David weld those? You did. <laughs> Pick him up. Pick her up. Oh, oh, oh geez. <laughs> yeah, nice job. Oh, yeah. Way to go. <laughs> this has been one of those exceptional set locations. This big log's floated down in some high water and we've been able to use it the whole time here to balance out and make him dive under. It's a little wide and it's, oh, it's that deep here and it's that deep here. It's basically the same depth all the way across and what we did was just kind of pinched him down from both ways following the channels. It's changed a little with the high water. This side we've got some sticks up under here as well, kind of getting him to go this this way. Stick those back in. I create the illusion that this is the way I want to go. I'm done with my log now. I hope you fall in. <laughs> Why not? Now I'm going to get a log down. Of course, we don't want to get too much turbidity in the in the water. So we're going to throw all our mud up on out. Of course, we put it right on our trap. That's an old Indian scent hiding secret. You always got to have scent-free water water traps. Yeah, right. Like we're fishing again. See if I can find a little bit more stuff to keep them not left after the high waters. But we've never really had to worry about it much. So, probably stick this one over a little bit. That's all an illusion. This one's still got all the trigger on it, which is unusual because I usually chop them off a bit. Our finely crafted stabilizer. Homemade, of course. That is the difference with the that Canadian trap and this old Victor, the spring eyes won't go around the trap. Mm. 
somewhere off we don't get our finger in here. None of our wires are crossed. We're fishing. Sticking on the downhill side. I think they'll dive. We're along this same drainage area here and we got a little bit of fresh sign in here. Here's some uh, damage. This is typical damage we see to the fir trees here. I think we had a little bit of a discussion on different areas across the country, how they're they're eaten or not eaten. We, I see this in the spring. Often it's just that they'll girdle them. But you can see here he's actually uh, taking some down the down the slide and there's a feed bed on the other side there. So all I'm going to do here is I'm going to throw a con of bear, or not a con of bear, but a body get trap in. Quick and easy, a duke here. I welded the stabilizer to it. This actually, because I made some 660, uh, um, out of some other traps, I actually used their trigger on this. Stabilizer on the bottom wire on. I'm going to stick it at the bottom there. Throw a little food lure, be done. <clears throat> if you look at the the base of where our set's gonna go, the the water's definitely been disturbed. The bottom is clean. We've got some branches in here, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull them out of here, put them on top. That way, he's got to go right after through our trap to get to his feed. You can definitely see a fresh feed bed over there, fresh chewings. Especially a nice dive spot. As soon as the water goes down this summer, we'll probably stick a trap right in here and and. Have a gauntlet going. Mm. Get this set. We're throwing his food up on top here. That's the bad thing about having the safeties upside down, they fall off. Always be careful with the conner bear. Best to use safeties. We don't have no safeties. I like getting smacked, I guess. Not really going to have to hold much here, hopefully. Take a little bit of... Just to break up the outline. We already got that water going up there. Throw our food back up here. A little lure. Oh, we put some up in the air as well. Uh, is that beaver or is that muskrat? It's like over here, you got like, like smaller stuff, and then this is chewed, so. How does the, uh, the moss at the edge of the water there, or the, the algae build up, is it, has it been removed lately? Uh, no, it's actually really scummy looking. Okay, so it's old. That's one good way, especially in Washington here with the frost and our rain. Yeah. This is upstream of where the previous sets where you can see the trees are a little bit further on here it's kind of in a more sunny warmer um, starting to get into what they call the Fraser Valley it's where the the heat seems to back up against the mountains and it's usually sometimes 10 15 I call it the high desert out here 10 15 degrees warmer we're gonna walk upstream here a little way and we've got a double 660 we'll pull that out and clean it it's been in there for a while and reinstall it and show you what we got going there. So at first glance, the guy would say, wow, okay, here's some fresh sign. But if you pick up the wood itself, and then always look at the water line. Uh, if you got rising or falling, rising it's a little bit harder, but in a, especially in a falling water, you can definitely tell how old it is. Age that sign. Okay, we're at the next set here. You can see we hauled a plank basically to get out in the middle of this peat ditch here and uh, we got a double 660 down there but nothing's been through a bunch of junk piled on the edge here and we'll probably just throw a little bit more out to cover it and call that one good and go on to the next 
Okay, because this is a wide ditch, and we want them to make sure they go through the center of that 660. I'm gonna, I gotta, whoa! I gotta watch out for these bottomless peat ditches, too. Really, really dangerous ditches here. So I'm gonna get this center diverter out of the way here if I can. I'm gonna throw it up on the other side. And then the rest I'm just going to fill in with this canary grass here. Man, you smarter beavers, you know, if they're looking for find where man's been here, you don't, definitely don't want to do this, bring this stuff in from other places, but this has been a pretty good dive section here. Should be trapping muskrats a lot of them in this ditch but we're assuming nothing's been through here nothing's tripped trap looks good not all clogged up with dirt or debris i think we'll just leave it at that okay i think uh one of your most important tools if you're doing a lot of 80 foot beaver trapping is a four wheeler uh, this is a 500 and i actually think they're a little too big for this type of trap and it might be good you know back in your Montana backwoods whatever but uh, in and out of the swamps the trees these heavier rigs sink uh, they're hard to get in and out so if you're going to buy a rig just especially for beaver trap and I think you want to stick around to 350 or smaller four wheel drive but they sure make it easy we got young Paul up ahead of us clearing the path there we uh Gave him one of those uh, monsters before he got in here. Now he's going to town. I'd take a little chainsaw and, and clear this out to keep us going. Went a little bit different area than before. Large old beaver pond. The outflow over to the north. It's been plugged quite a few times. We trapped this pretty hard about four years ago. And what we found out in here is, is basically what they're doing is they're backing up this water to maintain the levels over there. Uh, up, basically up drainage. For their other pond where they're living so they also uh spring and summer when there's a lot of water they'll be downstream as well so what we're going to try to do is we're going to put a foothold in that uh not actually in the dam but in the crossover itself there and then basically put a little beaver plus where the water's running out into the Drainage below and, and see if we can pull somebody up into here. That tree shows a big old lodge, um, pretty dilapidated, but of course, this time of year, which is spring, we got them two year olds that'll move in and uh, do some home improvements. Here's our little um, crossover here, pretty gravy little set coming through. You can see on the log there. Um, the sign, the dirt moved off. I don't know something's been over there. Is it a muskrat? Mm, we don't know. Okay, I use a lot of these cement blocks just because you can leave them here year after year. Here's one that's been there. Still got our cable on, but we're going to uh, replace that. Not worry about swivels so much or whatever. This stuff's all disposable as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's number 12. Stranded, copper wire, plastic coated. I'm just gonna twist it around there a couple times. Tie it. Your smooth bottoms, they will pull the block up. But this has got quite a bit of muck. I see a lot of trees, so I'm going to fix this right in between there. Get her to sink down in that mud. Open this up a little bit if I can. 
get them kind of directed in a certain way. Slide your trap on, set it, think of the beaver where he's got his foot, where he's gonna put it down. Best to have a beaver, look at that. Look at how, how Sullivan's Beaver 2000. Show you trap placement, I'm not gonna worry about that. Anyway, slide it on your dra drowner, set her up and you're done. <coughs> you can see here. Oh, uh, Paul's about, what are you, Paul? How tall are you? 6'2", six 6'3". Six nah, you're taller than that anyway. And uh, he's standing on uh, uh, debris and dam material itself. So this is about eight foot dam. This is actually, uh, this is on some area of photos from 19 something, like 42 or whatever. Not so much this pond, but the pond next to it. And this one developed um, basically because of all the beavers that were in here. Being this area is so old, you find a lot of these are really, really old beaver dams. I don't know if we'll be able to see inside here are beaver dens. I'll probably have to have night shot to do this. But you would think the light would come on, but oh well, that's the way it is. It follows all the way over to here. There's more opening. I don't know how to turn on the light here and you'd have a cool, cool shot. Then out into the pond underneath the trees. Just a huge old place. They're all in through here. This, like I said, was on the photos in, like the first aerial photos of the area. Ancient, ancient beaver swamp. 